Okay, let me know if my screen is visible. Okay, let me know if my screen is visible. Hope my screen is visible. My voice is audible. Okay, so let us uh, do a quick recap about yesterday's topic. Uh, yesterday we were discussing about what encapsulation, right? What is encapsulation? Uh, when you wrap code and data together into a single unit okay the moment you hear about encapsulation uh, just think about a capsule just think about a capsule so capsule is going to what uh, the purpose of capsule is to store the medicine or, or else i can say that all the uh, medicines is contained in that capsule for the protection okay likewise in java if i if i uh, ever had to convert this analogy to the java programming language data and the behavior will be wrapped together into a single unit that process that mechanism is called as encapsulation okay this is one of the oops concepts in java very straightforward answer okay you have a data and you have a behavior behavior is also called as what methods data I mean data is also called as variables when you wrap up the variables and methods together into a single unit which is called as class okay this mechanism is called as was encapsulation so okay so and uh, the this look at this especially uh, and you achieve the 100 percent encapsulation by marking all the all the variables as private also by ensuring the valid getters and setters are incorporated okay when you do this you call it as a fully encapsulated class a fully protected class a fully protected class okay and uh, there are some advantages you know uh, what are they and uh, so this is a typical example of uh, the fully encapsulated class so for example when i want to set a name as balaji i will do a valid conditional check through the setters okay the name starts with b set the name if not don't set the name so we have that control you have that control and you you are managing the data uh, to uh, you know to to be stored by using setters so in the setters you are you are giving a valid conditional logic conditional check is being set up in the setters okay. you repeat this once again for the better understanding today the new topic encapsulation is over and today the discussion will be on top of variable argument this is one of the important topics in java okay every topic is important in java uh, but uh, when it is very 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 important i will uh, stress much on that topic okay so this is this is a typically important topic so you may get uh, if especially the pressures you may get a lot of uh, you may expect an, an entry question from this topic okay. variable argument so argument and variable argument variable argument will apply for java methods so typically when i say a java method so uh, the syntax for a typical java method is going to be like this right syntax let me write it down here syntax for a typical java method and there is a written type followed by uh, the method name method name followed by what the data type can say data type followed by variable name okay. this is the typical syntax for the java method or the concrete java methods uh, you have a written type and apart from this you may also have access modifiers it's up to you there are these things are optional access modifiers so the optional things that why uh, that is the reason why i have specified this thing in the bracket okay and uh, this is also an optional thing parameters you may use or you you may not use no issues so so there is another method called where arc methods variable argument methods so if you look at this method if i want to if i ever had to convert this method into the reality this is how it looks like for example public public is an access modifier for the time being i am taking it as public 
and the return type is void i am taking it as void the name of the method is uh, uh, let me take it as uh, testing okay and here the argument i am going to take is integer here okay so this argument is a fixed argument so I can also say that this method, this is the method uh, which is accepting a fixed argument. You cannot change this argument to the runtime. And again, for example, one more example, let me take. This is another method. Okay, now this time. So this is also a fixed argument. So, so this method is accepting two values, two arguments. However, these are the fixed. You cannot change this argument to the runtime. These arguments cannot be change it in the runtime i mean what i mean to say is you cannot increase or you cannot decrease these arguments in the runtime runtime especially okay, what does it really mean runtime what does it really mean let us understand that for example uh, let us take the same example package name is ganesh class a okay, let us take only one class here i have class b okay let me set up the folder uh, where is it exactly so this is the folder java3 let me remove all this the existing stuff okay now you observe where one thing i am taking a method like public void testing okay and this method is accepting two arguments two arguments are of integer type okay integer a comma integer b two arguments okay and after after accepting this arguments inside there is a logic okay this logic is written in such a way that these values that is being captured here will be added i mean a summation is happening so a and b that we are capturing here okay will be added here and will be displayed in the console the logic is very simple right so this is a fixed argument method a method a typical java method we can also say it as a concrete method or fixed argument method you cannot change these arguments the runtime i will tell you what is what it could really mean okay now click static void main in the array box Okay, so I have a method. I have a main method. So we know that where is we, it is already we have already discussed this. Whenever I want to uh, invoke this method, I need to create an object of for the respective class. Okay, what is the name of the class? Class B. So B O B J equal to new B. Okay, the moment I call this particular method by using this object variable, I mean reference variable O B J dot testing. What I'm supposed to do? OBH dot testing. Okay. So testing is a method is written in such a way that it is accepting two parameters, two parameters of integer type. Right? I need to pass exactly the two parameters here. If I do this, the output is going to be what? Output is going to be 110, 110, right? Right? Even I cannot do this. I cannot just pass one argument. If I pass one argument, we will get compilation error because the testing method is designed in such a way that it is accepting two values two integer values but if you pass only one integer value you get compilation error you cannot pass less number of values or you cannot also pass more number of values both are not possible you can you can only pass the fixed number of values how how can you say that it is fixed number of values because of this method the method is fixed and the arguments are fixed right if there are two arguments then the values that i am going to be passing here is going to be two itself right i cannot pass more than that i cannot pass less than that but what if i add a requirement like in the runtime okay in the runtime if i if i ever add a requirement like i i should be i should be able to pass any number of arguments no matter no matter what the parameters are here i can be able to pass i should be able to pass any number of arguments here 
okay with this ordinary method or with this fixed argument method it is not possible okay in order to achieve that achieve uh, the uh, like you know achieve the arguments which if the arguments are variable in the runtime okay i need to go for a method which is called as the variable argument method fixed argument method is not possible very very simple guys if you run this code it will be very clear since there is a uh, testing method is going to accept only two arguments i need i can only pass two values right if i run this what is output if i run this let me save this file save us uh, b dot java okay it has been saved successfully okay command prompt okay cd uh d drive java cd space java three. okay i need to do the compilation uh, the typical command for the compilation is what java c space hyphen d space dot space d dot java comparison successful java space it's in the ganesh package dot b that is the output do you agree with this everyone that is the output it is very clear but what if i give uh, what if i pass three arguments here what is output now 10 20 30 i am passing it here what is output now okay what do i get if i compile this code will the compiler be happy with my code or will the compiler is going to give me the output as 60 what do you get now we get compilation error why do i get compilation error because the arguments in the method clearly says that i can accept only two values but here we are passing three values not accepted if I run this if I run this see the output it says hey guy method testing in class b cannot be applied to the given test because obj you are passing three values here but the required values are two values integer integer but the values that you are passing is three values so actual argument and the foregone argument lengths different length it should be same it says clearly the length is different this length is different and this length is different okay so by i can conclude that i cannot pass more values or i cannot pass less values the values that i am passing should be the fixed one so when i say fixed one it should be same as the value same as the length of the parameter so when i say length of the parameter it means here it is accepting it is accepting two parameters okay i cannot pass more than two i cannot pass less than two. it should be two okay but my requirement is at the runtime if i pass 10 20 30 i should be getting output as 30. okay next time if i pass uh, if i pass 10 20 30 40 i should be getting the output like you know 100 okay during the runtime whatever the values that i pass based upon those values this method needs to be executed for this we, we are going to uh, learn about the where args method variable arguments method okay. so let me give you some theory so the syntax for the variable this is the syntax for the fixed argument method syntax for the fixed argument methods or concrete methods you can also call it as a concrete method or you can simply call it as a method okay so this is example one and this is example two now we will look into the syntax of the variable argument method syntax for the variable argument methods okay so instead of uh, using uh, here we are using a data type right data type after the data type please ensure that three dots are added after the data type after the data type please ensure that three dots one two three 
three dots are added after the data type followed by the variable name. That's it. Okay. In comparison, if you look at this method, look at the syntax. So this is the syntax for the typical Java method. This is the syntax for the variable argument method. Both look same. The only difference here is after the data type there are no dots, but here after the data type you will add you will include three dots here. As simple as that. Making sense, everyone? We will look into the program. Uh, am I clear? Are you all with me? Yes, no. Making sense, everyone? Only three dots. Add three dots. Okay. Those three dots will be used to represent this particular method as the variable or good method. As simple as that. This is a simple differentiation. For an ordinary method, just the data type will be there. For a variable or good method, along with the data type, it is also going to have the three dots. You cannot use four dots or you cannot use uh, two dots. It should be three. It should not be less than three or more than three. It should be three. Okay. Let us understand this example by uh, let us to let's see. Look at this now. This this code is going to be very interesting. So now I have a fixed argument method. Okay. When you see this, when you do not see any dots, just understand it like it is a fixed argument method. Okay, let us design the variable argument method. Okay, I am copying the same code. Okay, let me remove this. Instead of addition, okay, let us take only one value here. Integer A. Okay. Fixed argument method. Okay. You have to be with me. Now I have only one method. The, how many methods are there in the class B? Answer me. How many methods are there in class B? Totally, how many methods are there in the class B? Two methods, two methods, two, two, including main method. You should also you should always include the main method. Main is also the method. Okay. Two methods. I'm adding one more method. So by looking at this method, I want you to uh, differentiate between these three methods. So what exactly the difference between these three methods? Okay. So, okay. So, now what is this method? Can I say that this is a variable argument method by looking at the prototype, by looking at the syntax? This can be a variable argument method or where org method. Okay. By looking at this, I can say that this is a main method. So in the class B, I have three methods. One is the fixed argument methods, or I can simply call it as a method. Just a method is fine. Okay, this method is going to is representing what? This is representing the variable argument method. Why variable argument method? Look at the uh, syntax after the data type. When you include three dots, three dots after the data type, this becomes a variable argument method. Okay, and uh, now uh, see, look at this. Uh, this is the main method. Okay, now I am calling OB obj dot obj dot testing so i am calling obj dot testing so i want to call this variable argument method okay how can i call this so variable variable argument means you can pass any number of integer values there is no limit for that you can add, you can pass any number of integer values because it is of integer data type right so here i can pass 10 comma 20 comma 30 comma 40 comma 50 comma 60. When I do this, uh, now uh, can you tell me what is output now? What is output? Which method will be called? Look at the values, look at the uh, values and based upon these values, you can guess which method is going to be called. From here the control will be transferred to the respective method. Okay, these arguments are variable arguments. So where variable argument where or where org method will be called. Inside the where org method, there is only one statement. Okay, that this, this statement is going to get uh, displayed in the console. Yes. Fix argument method. Good. Fix argument method. Good, good, good. Right? Let me run this. 
I will also help you with the internal working of fixed argument variable argument method. So actually this should be variable argument method because no issues. I forgot to the fix argument method may know. Okay, now it is variable argument method, right? Do you agree with me? BAM. BAM. Yes, okay. Let me run this. Variable argument method. So okay. So I am passing number of arguments. So this is going to get displayed. Now you tell me if I do if I do this, now what will be the output? Just try to understand how many values are being passed in the method. In the method call. Okay. Testing method has to be called. This testing method is accepting only one value. Right? Find the matching method in the current class. Find the matching testing method in the current class that is accepting only one value. Why one value? Because we are passing only one value. Find the matching method. Okay, if the matching method is found, find the instructions that is available in the matching method. So what is the output now? FIM, fixed argument method. Let me run this. Fixed argument method. Because because 10, uh, this 10 is only one value of integer type. Okay, the equal the testing the testing method will be the equivalent testing method will be found will be found by the uh, what we call it as the controller JVM. So this is a testing method. So it is going to accept 10 and this is going to get displayed in the console. Good, good, good. Okay, now let me tell you. Let me remove this. I am removing this for the better understanding. Okay, let me remove this. Now tell me the output. Guess the output. <laughs> Is there any difficulty in guessing the output? Object has been created. I am calling the testing method for the three times. First time the testing method has no arguments, no values. Second time one value. Third time two values. Okay. So what is a possible output now? Any answers? Error. What about others? Madhu says error. Do you agree with Madhu? Everyone? You agree with Madhu? Madhu says error. What about others? So this is the interview question guys. One of the interview questions. Jyoti also says Madhu. Make it fast. I want answers from you. Sashwant, why are you not responding? Sashwant is there or not? Sashwant respond. Teja says error. Chaitanya. Samikta, everyone respond. Good, good, good answers. Okay, let me run this. See the answer. Variable argument method, variable argument method, variable argument method. Okay, this is one of the interview questions. I will, I will explain you. It's very, it's very clear. People still answering. Good, good, Chaitanya. I, I was expecting this answer. Good, Prasad. Okay, everyone, listen here. Okay. Hmm. I hope my uh, code is visible now. Okay, see, now uh, we have only one method here, guys. So we must, uh, we must accept this. Okay, we have only one method. The one method is what? One method itself is a variable argument method. Only one method we have, that one method itself is a variable argument method. Yes or no? Variable argument means 
this method is capable of accepting any number of arguments at the same time it is also capable of accepting a method with no arguments also see variable argument method states that you can pass any number of values at the same time even if you do not pass any values no problem i will execute right pass any number of values it can be any number of values or leave the uh, leave the method uh, parameter leave the method parameter as empty no issues i will be there to execute i will be there to do what i will be there to get execute that, that is the case first line look at the instruction in the first line object has been created we know the object creation process isn't it right after this we are calling what obj testing testing is a method which is not accepting you are not passing any values here no issues there is a method that is supporting this method call which is the method this is going to support this method call this will, will this will get executed again it will come back okay second time one argument no issues we have a method that is supporting variable or where our method is here this will get executed third time 10 20 this will get executed making sense everyone who has said error error okay, this is an advantage this is an advantage of variable organ methods okay now you see by having said all this now you try to answer this and try to answer this no okay i have a variable argument method okay and 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 here i have a I have a two argument method and I also have a single argument method. Single argument method. So the program is looking very messy. Okay, let me uh, copy in the paint screen for the better visibility. Okay, now can you just guess the output for this code? Let me put the main method next to this particular. Uh, Next, uh, next to this code. Okay. I hope the code is usable. Huh? Now you can uh, can you answer this to me? Okay. So three method calls are there, and I have three methods. So for your visibility, uh, this is the where variable argument method, and I have a fixed argument method. I have two fixed argument method and one variable argument method. Okay, and one main method. From the main method, the method calls are happening. Okay, this is the first method call. First method call, second method call, third method call. What is the output now? <laughs> Do you think uh, there will be any kind of ambiguity? There will be any kind of confusion here? Very, very important question this one. You must understand the control flow. Only for the control flow, we are learning this coding part. Okay. anyone bam sam uh, 2 am okay van single argument good 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 okay so let us run this code okay, i am running this code bam sam 2 argument method okay so now the here the idea here is Firstly, the priority will be given for the fixed argument method. Okay, so the control will be definitely the control is going to be uh, starting from the main method and the first instruction is what the object creation instruction. After this, the method call instruction. Okay, testing method is being called. But this testing method, we are not passing any values here. Okay, first it will first it will try to identify if there is any fixed argument method that is not accepting any values. There is no such method. Okay. Then the priority will be given to the variable argument method. Then the priority will be given to the variable argument method. So what is the output? Variable argument method will be displayed in the console. Priority. This will be this will be given as a priority. Second priority. First priority will be given for the fixed argument method. If those methods are not really found, right? Then uh, the variable argument method will be given as a priority. Secondly, now you look at this. 
okay then means uh, it is it will find a method testing method that is accepting the value 10 fixed argument is already there so this will be displayed in the console right third again testing method two arguments it will first try to identify any fixed argument method already there okay this will be displayed in the console okay now the conclusion is very simple if when you have fixed argument method and the variable argument method the priority will be given to the fixed argument method if it is not found if it is not found then the priority will be given to the variable argument method making sense everyone yes no people who have been answered okay now you see next question okay now uh, i will try to explain what is happening behind the scenes how the values are getting stored behind the scenes that part we will understand now okay so let me remove all this let me remove all this okay, let me take this and take this an example so let me open the paint okay, now focus here guys your focus is necessary the problem here is so when you want to uh, see, see if you are learning java java you cannot uh, learn in a, in a go you cannot learn in a go it means if there is a concept for example if there is a concept a to understand this concept i should understand some of the concept b understand b concept i should understand some of the concept c to understand this i should understand d to understand this i should un understand d to understand this i should understand some of the few of the concepts of b should be understood okay so it is correlated if there is a concept a to understand a i should understand some of the concept of b if i want to learn b i need to understand some of the concepts of c and a correlation is always there if you want to understand c i should understand d if you want to understand d i should understand e and e and uh, c if you want to understand f i should understand some of the concepts of e and d Okay, there is a correlation between each and every topic that's why it is called as object orientation okay so to understand this uh, where org methods okay we need to understand what we need to understand about arrays okay this is our code this is our code i will keep it very simple i will keep it very simple since i will, I, I did not introduce the concept of arrays i will keep it very simple you will not get any confusion i want your attention so uh, this is why we have one class okay so we, we are passing three values here right 10 20 30 okay the moment it finds okay, this 10 20 30, 30 will be what will be transferred to the its values will be transferred to the respective methods okay this values will be transferred to the respective method. this is the respective method isn't it so this is a variable argument method so we have three values previously for the fixed argument method or for a concrete method since the arguments are fixed each and every value can be assigned to the respective variables yes or no for example look back here okay if, if i am passing 10 comma 20 for example if i am passing 10 comma 20 to call a respective method this 10 is applicable or this when will be assigned to the variable a this 20 will be assigned to the variable b okay the order is from left to right the order is from left to right okay we know that uh, this uh, the respective values will be going to get assigned to the respective variables we know this okay but here the problem is for the variable argument methods if you look at here okay, only one variable name is there variable name is only one a i cannot assign T values to one variable. Internally, what will happen? An array will be created. What is an array? The question is, what is an array? Okay. So to understand this array, we need at least uh, five classes. Simply, I'm saying one line. Uh, I'm going to give you a one line answer. What is uh, what is it exactly means? Array 
is used to store the collection of values to a single variable. Okay, example. Example for example, when I if I have data, then if I have data 20, if I have data 30, if I have three values, okay, literally, uh, so till now, from our understanding, I will be able to store these three values just like I can assign the value 10 to the variable A, and I can assign the value 20 to the variable B, and I can assign the value 30 to the what 30 to the variable C. Three values, I need three variables. Ordinary concept. Okay, but but my requirement is instead of using three variables, I want to assign all this data, all these values to one variable. I want to assign all these values to one variable, not three variables. I do not want to use three variables, I want to use only one variable. To do that, I will be using a concept of what arrays. So I can store the value. I can store all this value to only one variable. This is called what array. For now, what is an array? Array is used to store the collection of values to a single variable. Right? So three values 10, 20, 30 assigned to what single variable in our example. Because we pass the 10, 20, 30 single variable. Next question is how each and every variable will get identified okay how the each and every variable will be identified okay so if you have a variable if you have a variable like integer uh, z equal to 100 okay this value 100 can be identified by z right when you give system dot out dot print ln when you type z okay so this z is going to pull the value 100 so the address of 100 is z very simple but how these values are can be located how these values can be recognized because all these three values values are stored in a single variable can i do like this system dot out dot print and if i try to print a do you think that i am going to get all the three values like 10 20 30 no that will not happen in java that will not happen in java what java says okay, when you are storing values in an array especially in an array again what is an array collection of values stored in a single variable is called as an array so when you are storing a number of values in an array okay, each and every value will be identified by indexes indices indexes okay, so this is called as what index 0 index starts from 0 this is what 1 this is what 2 index starts from if you have three values okay the starting index will be zero ending index will be two if you have five values the starting index will be zero and the ending index will be four n minus one because it's starting from zero okay? if i want to print respective values i can use like this System dot out dot print ln okay a of zero if I do a of zero I get what ten if I do a of one I get what twenty if I do a of two I get what thirty okay. can we apply this in the code let us see let us try to apply this and this in the code and see if you are getting the same output okay a of 0 a of 1 so what do you think the output is going to be now what do you think the output is going to be now passing three values just uh, from here you understand i am passing 10 20 30 this 10 20 30 is carried along with the method call method call okay this 10 20 30 is getting stored like this in the memory 
it's getting stored like this in the memory okay and i am doing the system dot order i am calling a of 0 when i do a of 0 10 will be displayed in the console okay then i do a of 1 20 will be displayed in the console what do you think so then i do a of 2 a of 2 30 will be displayed in the console you agree with me yes no good 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 are you getting this everyone who is not responding i want answers from you all let me run this Ten, twenty, forty. Where else? Making sense? Thirty. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, no issues. I have given your forty. Okay. Your answers are correct. With respect to this question, your answer is correct. Everyone? Yes. No. Yeah. Now you see. Now, uh, uh, see. Uh, don't worry about this array. Uh, after uh, fifteen, after completing object orientation. We are going to uh, discuss a lot about Java arrays. Okay, very very interesting topic. For now, just understand that array is used to store the collection of values to a single variable. That's it. That understanding is okay for now. Okay. Now I am doing a small changes in this program. I am doing what? I am doing a small changes in the program. Okay. There is one more method. That me that that method is going to give the length of the array. One more method is that that method is going to give what it is going to give the length of the array. Okay, for example, system dot out dot print ln. If I want to get the length of the array, what does it mean? Number of values that is stored in this array. Number of values that is stored in this array. I can do a I can do a I can do get the length. By using this length method a dot length a dot length length is a inbuilt method okay when you do this you will exactly get how many values are stored inside the array a how many values are here 10 20 30 three values okay let's see if we are going to get it or not I think length is this I think one minute. Three. So not length method, length is a variable, so length. Only length. When you give length, you will get you will get to know how many values are stored in the respective array. Okay. Having said this, let us take this example. Let us uh, redo uh, redo this example. Now, can you tell me the output of the following code? So, just to try to understand how many method calls are happening behind the scenes. Okay. So, by looking at this, it is very visible that it is clearly visible that there are four method calls one method call, two method call, third method call, and the fourth method call. Four method calls are happening. Okay. All the methods calls are respective to this variable argument method. Because only one method is available so definitely this method will be invoked right first time for the first time when it is getting invoked is going to see first i will tell you one value we are passing one value so here 10 will be stored in the array 10 will be stored in the array. we are trying to find the length how many elements are there in array only one so here one will be displayed in the console again second method call two will be displayed in the console third method call Three values we are passing. Three will be displayed in the console. Fourth method call. Four will be displayed in the console. Don't you think so? Yes, no. Good, good, good. Good, Chaitanya. Everyone, are you getting this? Right. So let me run this.
one two three four so we are able to find the number of values that is getting passed in array you can also give you can also pass the uh, no argument array okay no argument array i am passing what no argument array okay. now in this case the answer should be what zero zero one two three four five don't you think so yes no zero one two three four right zero one two three four four right zero one two three four okay so this is an intuition to develop a little complex program little complex program my program i need to develop a program in such a way that okay, i will be passing values here i should get an output i should get the output like the summation of these values when i pass 10 20 30 40 the output should be 100 when i pass 10 20 the output should be uh, 30 when i pass 10 20 30 the output should be 60 how can we achieve that we will understand it okay so inside this firstly we are finding a length okay now what i am going to do is so i am using a for loop for integer i equal to 0 okay. i is lesser than a dot length okay. i plus plus I equal to zero. I is lesser than a of length i plus plus. I will explain the. I will explain you this about this program. Here I am also taking. I am removing this. And teacher, sum equal to zero. Sum equal to plus a of Can you tell me what could be the output if I run this program? Mm -hmm. Program looks a little complicated. Huh? The real purpose of var variable argument method will be understood here. Can anyone help me with the output of this program? Any anyone, any experts? 100. Good Chaitanya. So let us run this. Good mother, let me run this. I will explain you people who haven't answered to this. No worries, I will explain you. Okay. Sum dot out dot printer. I missed this actually. Sum should be printed now. And that is output. See? When I pass four values, it is giving me the summation of these four values. When I pass five values, I will be getting the summation of these five values. When I pass six values, I am going to get the summation of six values. Okay, by using one method in the runtime, I can able to pass any number of values as per my requirement. Okay, if I pass only one value, I will be getting ten. If I pass two values, if I pass uh, two values, I will be getting what thirty. So we can understand this like in, in this in, in this way. 10, 20, 30, 30, comma 40. Okay. So now you see if I run this code, 10, 30, 60, 100. What does it really mean? Look at the output 10. Okay. 30. Summation of 10, 20, 30. Okay, 10, 20, 30. What is it? 60, isn't it? Right, 100. Okay, if there, I mean, if there is no where out methods, I need to write four different methods. Don't you think so? Four different fixed methods, and in, in each and every method, I need to write my own logic. But here, I am able to achieve. I am able to achieve the variable argument by using the variable argument method. I am able to achieve this by using the variable argument method. Only one method. I am able to pass values in such a way that for all these values for all these method calls okay this is going to get invoked and i'm going to get the relevant output expected output 
okay now the your question is how it is giving us the output right i will explain it let me take this code focus here everyone focus here <laughs> Let me divide this code into two parts. Okay, my code is visible now. See, you need to focus here. You need to focus. Yeah. this part especially okay now you see what is happening okay uh, i am passing four values 10 20 30 40 okay this 10 20 30 40 is going to call the variable argument method okay all these values 10 20 30 40 is getting stored inside the a variable so internally in the memory it is going to be like this this is how it is going to get stored Okay, so this is what this is 10 and this is what 20, 30 and this is 40. Okay, and collection of values is being assigned to a single variable. What is the single variable here? A is the single variable. Okay, each and every box, each and every memory uh, memory registry will be addressed by index, indexes. Okay, index starts from 0. So this, this is zeroth index, this is first index, this is second index, this is third index. For whole value, for four values, the index starts from 0 to 3. Okay, these are the indexes. Okay, now what I am saying, the first line, look at this first line. I am, uh, I am assuming, I am assigning the value 0 to the sum variable. Internally, there is a sum variable. Okay, 0 is assigned. Okay, and uh, the zero is assigned. I mean, the zero is the value assigned to what? Some variable. Okay, so now you look at this. I am using a for loop. For loop is starting from integer i equal to zero. Okay, i is lesser than or i is lesser than a dot length. And again, what is a dot length here? When I say a dot length, is going to give the number of values that is stored inside this a array. How many values are there? Four values are there. So a dot length is going to give what? Four. So we have already discussed a lot of stuff about what for loop. Okay, the boundary is starting from zero and it will iterate till zero to three. After i equal to zero, so i is lesser than four. Okay, this like i is lesser than four. Okay, expression two. After expression to body of the loop will get executed. Yes or no? In the body of loop says there is only one instruction in the body of loop. Okay. What is it? Sum equal to sum plus a of i. What is the sum here? Zero. Latest value is zero. Okay. Zero plus a of a of i. A of my i means this is a. Okay, what is the value of i? What is the current value of i? See, let me take a create a table for i. So we better understand. This is i. This is i. Okay. Firstly, the value of i is zero because value i starts from zero, right? So zero. So we want to find a of i. So a of i is like it can be represent like a of I, which is called as a of 0 okay the value inside a of 0 is what a of 0 is what 10 okay so 0 plus 10 0 plus 10 is going to give what 10 itself right so this 10 will be assigned to the sum variable 10 will be assigned to the sum variable so 0 will be replaced by Okay, first in first iteration over. 
let me remove this first iteration over okay now i will be incremented i plus plus so i plus plus i plus plus means zero will become one okay now one will be compared to four let me remove this this time one will be compared to four one will be compared to four this true true means body of the loop okay again here sum equal to sum plus a of i what is the sum now this time it is 10 so 10 plus a of i i is what latest value of i is what one a of one okay what is the value stored in a of one 20 so instead of a of one i can write 20 10 plus 20 is going to give what 30 30 will be assigned to sum okay with latest value 30 remove this uh, second iteration is also done okay now third iteration third iteration is what i plus plus i plus plus means incrementation incrementation means i will become 2 okay when i becomes 2 okay 2 will be compared to 4 right Two will be compared to four. True. Body of the loop will be executed. So again, sum. Sum is what? Thirty. Latest value of sum is thirty. Thirty plus a of a. Thirty plus a of a means a of two. What is the value inside the two? Thirty. So thirty plus thirty. Thirty plus thirty is going to become what? Sixty. Sixty will be assigned to what? The sum itself. Okay. So thirty becomes. right after this what again i plus plus so when i plus plus is happening uh, 2 becomes 3 2 becomes 3 this 3 will be compared to 4 remove this 3 will be compared to 4 it is going to be true itself body of the loop will be executed so latest value of sum is 60 plus a of 4 a of i a of i is what a of sorry a of 3 a of 3 a of 3, a of 3 is what 40 okay 60 plus 40 60 plus 40 is what 100 100 will be assigned to sum itself Yes or no? Come in, sir. Again, last iteration. Last iteration is I will be incremented to 4. Yes or no? I will be incremented to 4. Okay. Now, the conditional check 4 is greater than 4. It is going to be false. So, this is false. False means body of the loop, body of the for loop will be skipped and uh, this statement will be executed. What is it is executing? The value of sum. What is the value inside the sum? 100. So, 100 will be displayed in the console. Everyone making sense? Darshini, who has who haven't responded, are able to follow now? Okay, so this is the importance of for loop. Okay, this is the importance of. If you get logged out of the meeting, try to rejoin. Okay, we will be having class for ten more minutes. This is important of var variable argument methods, and uh, this is how we need to perform the calculation. Mm, guys my screen is visible just for the confirmation okay so let's let's start
okay so uh, one of the interview questions uh, in uh, in one of the uh, reputed company i think cap chimney so the question was like uh, drafted like this on top of where argument methods okay so you need to uh, you need to follow uh, two rules so the question was like this let me remove all this this is not necessary be executed so will be executed and uh, okay now you tell me now the first parameter is the ordinary parameter or the fixed par parameter second parameter is variable argument parameter okay having said this if i pass if i invoke this method call by passing values as 10.10 up comma 100 10 point, do you think it is going to be valid so this is the interview question what is output i hope my question is clear okay so three dots is representing the variable arguments variable arguments okay if you do not find any dots it is the fixed argument okay but the data type of fixed argument is float itself but the data type of variable variable argument is what integer integer here okay so i am passing the values in such a way that first value is matching this data type second value is matching this data type or else 20 30 first value is matching this these three set of values is matching this do you think it is valid or invalid what do you think what is your uh, what are your thoughts will be executed okay okay i didn't see i did not see this answers okay will be executed now the reverse question was like reverse question the reverse question is like i am keeping this here okay first first parameter is variable argument parameter and the second parameter is what fixed argument parameter okay, because of these changes i need to do the changes here as well here as well first three parameters are variable argument parameters and the last parameter is the fixed argument parameter okay this is possible or not possible what is your what are your thoughts here so if you see this okay all the three arguments are matching for this the last argument especially is matching this uh, particular data type uh, what are your thoughts on this will be executed jyotia says possible uh, madhu says not possible what about others possible samikta says possible okay uh, even uh, you know by my explanation we may assume that it is possible that is what my explanation is since uh, we are finding it and uh, we are very much convinced that uh, by looking at this code okay it is possible because the arguments are definitely matching arguments are what definitely matching because if you look at the placeholders if the last value is getting mapped to the respective fixed argument variable the first three values are getting mapped to the variable argument variable so no issues matching okay that is our assumption our assumption is uh, it's very good our assumption is very good our thought process is good but we get an error you should keep this in mind okay the rule is there are one rule that you should uh, understand that is there are two rules first rule is okay variable pair or has to be the last argument if you want to if you want to combine where arg must be the last argument now by looking at this where arg is not the last argument violation this rule is getting violated so it is not possible okay it is not possible if the where arg is last argument it is possible and again now if i do this integer b okay, which is rule number 2 
So how many variable arguments are there? Let me remove this also. How many variable arguments are there? Two variable arguments, yes or no? Yes or no? Two variable arguments, right? Two variable arguments. Let me run this. And again, see uh, what it says. No, no, no. This is um, same error. Let me save this, okay? See, it says not possible. <laughs> okay? The rule number two says there should be only one variable argument. Okay? There can be only one variable argument in the method. One variable argument in the Java method. Right? So rules. Variable argument must be the last argument in the method. Okay, second rule is there must be only one variable argument in the method, or else you will do you get what you get compilation error. You get compilation error. Okay, is there any other example that I can uh, show you? Okay, one last example. I'll conclude this. Try to answer this. Now this is possible or not possible? So let me keep it as uh, integer itself. Let me keep it as integer itself. Okay. Now I have only one variable argument in in one method. So I have two methods. Two methods have two variable arguments. So this is definitely not possible. Do you agree with me? Because duplication. This is definitely not possible, yes or no? So it says already defined, so not possible. So my question here is, uh, let me do this as, uh, let me remove this method. Load. Okay. Okay. Now what is output? What is the output for this code? I am passing an integer argument, fixed integer argument, but there is only one argument that is a variable argument of float type. I am passing an integer here. Okay. Whether this, this uh, method will be invoked or not invoked? That is my question. Possible will be executed. Possible. Why possible? Promotion. We have discussed about this promotion concept. Automatic promotion. So the integer will be uh, promoted to the float variable. Because this is smaller data type, this is larger data type. No possible. Okay. When this is larger data type, for example, when this is a smaller, the values that you are passing here is a larger one. Is it possible now? Yes, no? No. Why no? Testing. Good, good, good. It's not possible. 
okay so logic conversion that possible logic conversion because we are passing a float value but the equivalent port value is not available okay and we have a we have a data type of integer integer is smaller than float it is not possible okay if i want to make it possible if i do double here if i keep double here don't you think that it is going to be possible now yes or no it is possible now don't you think so because float value that we are passing will be stored in the double variable no issues ideally these are the questions that you can get here mm, then that's it this is about all about what variable argument method definitely you will get an interview question here i will give you the complete notes tonight okay try to do the revision but don't think about arrays okay so don't think what is an array so the concept that i have introduced might be for you, you know very difficult to grasp but we have a big session on top of arrays concept okay i will explain you i will explain it to you very clearly